I want this artwork to highlight the the positivity in communities, in relationships, and people working together to make things better. Friends and families said they wanted to see what farming was like. They wanted to come see our animals. It just started to really click that these kids belong outside. I want the reality for the Congress to understand this is not a good thing if y'all supporting Haiti to send these people back because the government of Haiti cannot really receive these people. It's sort of like you're just sending them back to their death and famine. Zaltan Hakalanuma, I was Dola Scalanima. Kalaklak baby Duganim Rata Karakoli. Tidagas the Hakra Janguna, the Hamunga Sarahai. O Pedaida Hakrai. For almost two years, Lal Mohammed and his brother Bakhti Ali lived and trained with Islamic State Khurasan. <laughs> Now they're back and trying to readjust to a normal life. We meet at their home in the Achin district of Nangarhar province in eastern Afghanistan. This is where, three years ago, ISK emerged as a vicious new militant force. Even residents, used to the strict fundamentalism of the Taliban, were taken aback by ISK's extremism. In a region racked by conflict, both foreign and domestic, their violence stood out. Yet, the Afghan government was slow to move against the militants, allowing them to entrench. But with the help of NATO and U.S. forces, they eventually counter-attacked. The biggest non-nuclear bomb ever used by the U.S., nicknamed the mother of all bombs, was dropped on an ISK target not far from here. The government and its allies have taken back some of the region but not all. Look. Despite the gains, we received a very clear signal that war in this region is not over yet. While we were standing around, a bomb was dropped over that mountain. Traveling through Ajin is dangerous. Outside is a few and easily recognized. Militants have informers among the population. Kidnappings for ransom are common. So we need help from the heavily armed local police. This part of the house is called a hujra. It is reserved for entertaining male guests. I am an oddity here. We talk to the boys under the watchful eye of their father and the local police chief. Daesh, as the militants are also called, came to this house to recruit the men and boys. After decades of foreign intervention, it wasn't a hard sell. Like a in the Urdu Dizel Munaka Kapiro Sarab Sapkiliana. 
لکه محلیان شو لکه دا کوم ارګانونه چې دا دو سره چې ولیار دي کافر شاته یو دوی مخ ته ولیار دي کنه او دا ویډیو ګانې به مونږ ته خودېش دا ظلم کا دا ظلم کا مونږ له دا احساس راغه چې مونږ بس دوب زت ودره کو بس دو سره جنگ وکړو دی فادر تاویز خان واز کنوینسډ سو هی جوینډ آی اس کی ټیکینګ هیز سنز وت هیم The militant group worked hard to shape the children's minds. Dagas palas, dagas khosha po, nagira malta nova. Mashuman deru, takriban der kasanu bas. Da masaliya ga be takle o de mashuman ho zehan da gai bas. Abyan aur soch na ka direct bas ke indhari am lot hoya im khaya ukro. Ta ta Quran ne usale ukro na gio, khaya kim dar ka. Ne katsas mana mashran kasanu ka na. ډیرو مرغه په خه کسانو خو کام کسان د غلس پوری وو څه وو کلو تو کلو لس کلو د غس مشمان مو سره لکه پس ما خپل دل زما خپل استر غو لیدل ال دی چې مو سره چې وو تو ته بس د سلا درس مرو خود او نور دو ته انتحاری د غم کچ لکه داس او داس کنه چې دا کار وکړه دومره غو دا ډایرک دومره تکلیفونه غو کړه بس ډایرک ان دا کار د چوک ټول تکلیفونه بس داس ډایرک په جنت لل داس در سونه ور کولچ بس پیوا میاش که بیا ستا دا غنه وات ده ستا دا غ تاثیر بیا نه بک څه چا غوت ایل بس ما غوت دا غ کیده دی انسټرکټر ټرین د ملټری سټایل وت فزیکل ایکسرسایزز ان ویپنز ټرینینګ ټیچینګ دم هاو ټو فایر پیستلز اے کے 47ز بامز ان راکټ لانچرز دی الټیمیټ گول was to make them suicide bombers eventually they took the younger brother into battle na kalano maha was kata chirwa gus wale chila da khabar shi munga ba posto da khome jangunu kru at bala khilen so gula swale me ba pida yukre but they lost that fight and had to retreat he came back alive and with a renewed determination to carry out ISK commands one of the militants decrees was that anyone who did not follow their fundamentalist brand of sharia must be punished khamakhana gobala kam de kum dar sira kolo gobe wele che dikar ki sawab de nulum da koshish ke che che sawab ho gaya finally it became more than their father could bear ISK would not let people leave punishing sometimes killing those attempting to escape eventually the boys and their father managed to flee taking with them some other men the father now works with the police who offers some protection but he knows the danger if ISK were to regain control of the region While these two young boys are now safe, no one knows what happened to the dozens of others that were in the IS controlled madrasas with them. Aisha Tanzeem, VOA News, Achin, Nangarhar. The message here is one of hope, one of inclusion, one of just kind of celebrating the diversity of Los Angeles, uh, an allegory of the city, if you will. like my art i feel is a is a thing is a very natural thing for me uh i don't really put too much thought in why why i do the things that i do uh they come very naturally so i guess it, it's just an extension of of my personal curiosity and how i approach the world i live on 
So if I am right now interested about how the city behaves and how the city changes, it's natural that my art is going to reflect that as well. These are 49, the small one are 35. Yeah, it's frustrating. This project was for me a perfect excuse to get to know the city better and, and get out there and, and, and discover what's going on around me. I think like everyone, when, when they see the body of my work, they consider me a local. And I consider myself as well a local. At the end, this is the city that I now consider mine. Downtown really is like my, my front yard. I grew up on a street called City View where I had a clear sight line to this cityscape. And um, I was always destined to, uh, I think, dream big and paint big with that kind of uh, vernacular, that kind of backdrop. The message here is one of hope, one of inclusion, one of just kind of celebrating the diversity of Los Angeles, uh, an allegory of the city, if you will. One of the angels up there, the one at the very top, is actually a portrait of my mother, the first person to introduce me to downtown LA. The other angel that I selected is a, uh, a homeless woman that uh, would hang out here every day. And uh, I saw her just earlier today. That's one way of uplifting someone through, uh, through the creative process. The Tongva Indian girl is really the anchor of the mural and where the whole kind of, not only mural, but the city of LA begins. Uh, she is a, uh, as a Tongva and the Tongva Indians are the original people to inhabit the LA basin. So they're the uh, original Angelinos. Do you have also like a... I grew up in a super diverse community in Silver Spring, Maryland. After college, I started traveling. I went to Thailand and ended up getting a job, really luckily, um, at an art studio there. So I started teaching, and teaching art, you know, became part of my practice. And art became this way for me to connect with people. And so I started recognizing it as both a career path, as an educator, and as a social practice, a way to engage with other people and other cultures. So I moved to Baltimore a couple years ago. East Baltimore, uh, it's changing really d dramatically. You have blocks of vacant homes. Um, you have new high-rise apartments shooting up right next to each other. So I think that's what led me outside with my easel, and um, I started painting these kind of areas of transition. Facing change was my way to explore really digging deeper than what's on the surface level to try to figure out what's really going on. And as I was doing that, um, neighbors, residents would come up to me and, and talk to me. So I paint portraits of each of the people that I interviewed on Formstone, which is uh, an exterior facade found on a lot of row homes here in Baltimore and I would collect debris from houses being demolished. Art innately is an emotional experience, and I think it asks you to be emotional and perceptive to feelings. Throughout this project of creating Facing Change, I heard a lot of really sad stories about people losing what they perceive to be their home or feeling pushed out. But I think at the end of the day, I get a feeling of hope and strength and pride through working with communities because I want this artwork to highlight the, the positivity in communities, in relationships, and people working together to make things better. Chloe, what was something your group had? They bring like special tools for the data.
Tell me your name. Chloe. And how old are you? Eleven. At its heart, it's incredibly convenient. Once we found out it was basically an iPad on a Segway, it's like that makes a lot of sense. Chloe, you look tired. Chloe, what was something your group had? They bring like special tools for the data. Yeah, it's just like having another student in the classroom. Yes, it's really nice and they help her out like the same way that they would help out another student. And how's it been for you? I've enjoyed it. I also feel like it's a learning experience too to be able to interact with someone that's at home but then feeling like they're still in the classroom. I think so important. What's the first thing that we do? Raise your hand and tell me. I mean, I feel like it's wonderful because I know I've always heard of a lot of um, students that had to be on home teaching and then them missing a lot of curriculum and then also missing the socialization with their friends and now for her to be able to be able to rest at home but then also be able to be in the classroom is wonderful. I thought so. I think it means that it was a small step for him, but when he tells like other people, they'll think, "Oh my God, it's so cool." I think I know the answer. I'll try it, and I get it right. So I'm like, "Oh, personal victory!" Whoa. So when we first looked at the farm, we were trying to figure out what kind of farmers we wanted to be. And then all of a sudden, all of these friends and families started to come out. They said they wanted to, to see what garden, you know, farming was like. And we had all these animals. They wanted to come see our animals. And that's when it started to spark a of, of farm school. And it just started to really click that these kids belong outside. They belong, you know, doing chores and working. They're so proud to be able to work on the farm and to be around these you know, awesome animals all the time and, yeah. and grow things and... What about this one? A pillow. Orange in Spanish is? Orange. Pillow. Anaranjano. A pillow. Anaranjano. Mr. Hayden, can you put yours away so you can come wash your hands? So this afternoon we will make butter because we're learning about the cow for this month. So then they learn that we make, that we receive things from the animals and they become thankful and when we have the garden, in the summer, we make things like salsa out of all the produce out of the garden. We make applesauce in the fall. Um, we try to incorporate cooking as much as possible. That way they can see the benefits of what we're getting out of the garden and actually taste it right then. Do snow. What do you do when it snows or rains or anything like that? Um, <laughs> that is actually the number one question immediately we get from parents is what happens when it rains and uh, we say bring an extra pair of clothes you know <laughs> we have raincoats we have boots we have hats we have gloves we go out and what more fun than these kids getting to splash in puddles and play in mud and 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 they're they have so much fun we're out all righty friends let's go feed the chickens <laughs> You know, I like to focus a lot on safety, um, you know, with animals. They, are, they do have their own personalities, so we talk about, you know, how to be safe around animals, you know, making sure that, you know, you don't put your hands near their mouth and curl their fingers, that way they don't bite. We talk about their feet and how they can step, and so we learn about our safety boundaries. So, hey, if they ever encounter some sort of animal, especially dogs, you know, that you always have to ask before you pet them, and we just like to offer these abilities to be with them so they can learn how to be around them. To be calm, not run around and scream and, and be gentle and you know taking care of animals is super super important. Like thank God for the culture just to say um, that the culture of hip-hop is sort of like what saved me and put me I'm in the position that I'm in. If it wasn't for the culture, they probably had me doing 32 summers. Thank God. The Carnival 3, The Fall and Rise of a Refugee, I'm inspired by Fela Kuti. And remember Fela Kuti studied jazz in England. 
I studied jazz in New Jersey. Fella fused his jazz and created Afro beats. And I did the same with an album called The Carnival. I created in my terms, I call it global gumbo. The slums, I started with the slums because that's where I'm from. The area where we got the guns, we got the drugs, you know what I mean? We got the, the fishermen fishing the cocaine out the sea, you know? And then the end, like thank God for the culture, just to say um, that the culture of hip hop is sort of like what saved me and put me um, in the position that I'm in. If it wasn't for the culture, they probably had me doing 32 summers. Thank God. I came from Haiti. My first stop was Brooklyn. Marlboro Projects, Coney Island, you know, and it's the immigrant story. We lived in the projects. Mama was on welfare. Like I always say, it was a culture shock because you can't speak English. You're trying to figure that out. The level of violence was crazy. Refugees found a home they were looking for. No more robberies, everybody eating. Trying to cure for the cancer, no more diseases. No bombs falling from the skyline. Peace treaty, everybody co-signed. Colorblind, we all want people. One love like a Bob Marley sequel. I'm sitting back listening to John Lennon, imagining that it happened. You've been very vocal about the ending of temporary protected status for Haitians. What's at stake here? I speak on this because I want the reality for the Congress to understand this is not a good thing if y'all supporting Haiti to send these people back because the government of Haiti cannot really receive these people. It's sort of like you're just sending them back to their death and famine, if that makes sense. Yeah, why Claire, hip hop guitarist, uh, catch a vibe with me, let's get into it. Can you put into words the yeah. feeling you have when you're composing music? Do you know if something is going to be a hit? The best way to explain it is when you're recording music, um, electricity flows through you and it just gives you this energy, man. I tell people we don't write hits, we write cultural phenomenons. And through the years, people will find records and continue to find songs. If I was president, I'll get elected on Friday. Voice of America, all my diasporas, this is your boy Wyclef Jean. One love, baby. And on Monday, everybody goes back to work like nothing happened.